This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, can you destroy Bitcoin with hostile nodes? I made a video yesterday about a marketing attack on Bitcoin that was urging people to try to change the code to move it from proof of work to proof of stake. And in the process, I got the same question many, many different times, and I think it's a very good question, so I wanted to answer it in today's video. And these are the various comments that had the question, what would stop a hostile corporation from setting up millions of full nodes and then changing the Bitcoin code? Is it possible to do a 51% attack by running a bunch of cheap Raspberry Pi non-mining nodes? Is there a way to overcome Bitcoin's consensus mechanism by controlling the majority of the non-mining nodes? And then the last question I think also says it quite well, what if those actors had 51% of the nodes? I think there's something like 20,000 existing nodes and they're fairly cheap. Couldn't the proof of stake folks spend $20 million, set up $25,000 new modes, uh, 25,000 new modes and have a majority? So this is a great uh, question that I'm gonna answer in this video. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd encourage you to like this video and subscribe because the vast majority of my, of my viewers have not yet subscribed. So let's talk about full nodes. This is a map of all the reachable Bitcoin nodes in the world. We can see they're spread out all over the world in many different continents. Currently about 15,000 reachable nodes. Adam Back says that they're, they're about 10x. They're approximately uh, 100,000 listen-only nodes. So there are a lot more nodes out there that uh, don't even show up on this map. So this is this is the Bitcoin network. These are the nodes. It's And it's important to distinguish between miners and nodes. So Bitcoin miners are the ones that run ASICs. They run these specialized uh, hardware machines. They burn electricity in order to try to guess a certain number that cannot be figured out. It has to be brute forced by doing the work, by burning electricity. And then if they guess the right, uh, the magic number, if they're the first one to guess, to guess it, they get the right to produce the next block, to package up all the transactions in it, and then to be rewarded with the, uh, the minor subsidy, the 6.25 Bitcoin in addition to the transaction fee. So those are the Bitcoin miners, and they're frequently confused with the full nodes. The full nodes are what I just showed you in that map. These are just uh, these are just computers that are running some version of Bitcoin Core software, and it doesn't really matter which version of it, it it is because all of these versions are backwards compatible. In other words, they've been soft forks and not hard forks. Anyone can run a version of Bitcoin Core software. You just take an old laptop or a Raspberry Pi and uh, or an old laptop if you don't have enough uh, hard disk space you can use an external hard drive like an ssd and you just download bitcoin core software and you can run it so that's the difference full nodes run bitcoin core software and verify that each block and each transaction is following the consensus rules the rules of bitcoin such as each block reward is only 6.25 bitcoin and it gets halved every four years or a certain number of blocks. So full nodes, they will reject, automatically reject the software running on them, will automatically reject any block or any transaction that violates these consensus rules. And these rules are reasonable. These are rules that Bitcoiners agree on. For example, you have to have a rule, for example, that you can't spend the same Bitcoin twice. If I have one Bitcoin, I can't spend it uh, in one place and then spend it again somewhere else. This would completely destroy Bitcoin as a form of money. So this is the so-called double spending problem. And just one example of what uh, the consensus rules include. Now, there's interesting game theory involved here because if miners create a bad block, in other words, they try to cheat, maybe they try to award themselves uh, 10 Bitcoin instead of just 6.25 Bitcoin, or if they do anything else that doesn't follow the consensus rules, they will create a block, even if they guess that magic number and they win the right to, to mine the block, this block will then be rejected by the full nodes. So full nodes will scan it, they'll see that it's not following the consensus rules, and they will not add it to their version of the blockchain. And so the way the game theory works or the incentive theory works here is that the miners will have wasted both their time. They have these depreciating machines that they might as well uh, make use of because these ASICs are only good for one thing. They can only be used to mine Bitcoin. They will have wasted their time and they also will have wasted further amounts of money in the form of energy, paying for all that electricity. And it's not cheap 
to mine a block. And so the miners can do bad things. They can create bad blocks, but the full nodes will not accept and stamp those blocks. Now, full nodes, in order to do this sort of verification, they have to have a copy of all the transactions and all the blocks that have occurred on the Bitcoin blockchain. In other words, in other words a full version of the Bitcoin blockchain going back to the Genesis block, which Satoshi Nakamoto mined in early 2009. This blockchain currently uh, takes up about 453 gigabytes. If you want to know how big it is, you can go to Clark Moody's Bitcoin dashboard. And um, right here at the top under blockchain, you can see chain size 452.6 gigabytes. You can also scroll over here and you can see the different versions of uh, the Bitcoin Core software that are being run by the full nodes. There's Satoshi 22.0.0 that 55.9% are running. And then you have all the older versions of Bitcoin Core software. If you want the latest version of Bitcoin Core software, you can go to uh, this website. It's bitcoin.org. And I will, uh, I will link to it in the description notes below. You just click download Bitcoin Core and it will automatically walk you through how to set it up on your computer. If you want to go a level deeper, learn how to integrate a good wallet with your Bitcoin full node, how to um, and how to set it up, I, I do cover this in my paid course, which I'll also link to below. But you don't need to take this course to run a full node. You can just download the Bitcoin Core software. But if you want the full package, if you want to learn how to do your own multi multi sig, set up your own uh, hardware wallet to your own node, etc., et the course is for is uh, definitely something you should check out. Now it's important to realize that the Bitcoin network is not a democracy. A lot of those questions and comments that I read at the beginning of this video were talking about what what would happen if you could control. 51% or in other words, more than 50% of the nodes and somehow force through uh, your ideas on everyone else. This is a great meme, four out of five citizens love democracy, just a problem if you're that one person uh, that's getting beaten up onto. So, but that's a, that's a whole nother, a whole nother discussion. But it's important to realize the Bitcoin network and the Bitcoin full nodes, they do not vote on things. They basically enforce the consensus rules and they reject blocks that are not uh, do not follow uh, the consensus rules. But the, you can think of Bitcoin as, uh, I think at its most basic level, it really is just a social consensus. It's a group of people who like Bitcoin in its current form. And a lot of people miss out on this. They think you can somehow hack the protocol or you can make some changes. But, but when you have a very strong social consensus, that's almost uh, a lot of people d d uh, describe it as almost being uh, like a, f a, fanatic, uh, a fanatical religion. When you have something like this, it's very, very difficult to kill. You could, um, if quantum computers hack the, the uh, SHA-256 algorithm or do something like this, Bitcoin would reconstitute itself under a, diff a different uh, hashing algorithm. And so, the Bitcoin network is a social consensus. It's basically people who run machines that run the current form of Bitcoin software. So this is something that's very difficult to kill. It's very difficult to attack, especially because these Bitcoiners are spread out all over the world in a very decentralized manner. So you can change the rules in Bitcoin and in Bitcoin Core, you can change the consensus rules, but then you will no longer have Bitcoin. And I think the best way to think about this is rather than being a democracy, it's a little bit like a game like basketball. So everyone knows basically how basketball is played. You walk the ball down the court by, you have to dribble the ball or you have to pass it. You can't just hold the ball in your hand and walk. And we all know the basic rules of basketball, traditional basketball, American basketball whatever you want to call it. Now, there are variations on basketball that some people choose to play. So for example, this is, uh, I'll link to this article, this is donkey, donkey basketball, where instead of, I'm not even sure if you have to dribble, but you ride donkeys and you try to shoot through a hoop. So this is, this is fine, but this is not something that, uh, for example, the NBA, the National ba Basketball Association is worried about. This is a very niche version of basketball and sort of it's sort of a novelty but this is not a threat to 
NBA basketball or traditional American basketball, and no one would see it as a threat. Basically, these are people who are having fun. They've come together to play by different consensus rules. And this is what happens in cryptocurrencies as well. So we have Bcash, we have BSV, and what these are, just a bunch of asses, and by that I just mean donkeys, for example, playing their own version of basketball off in a corner. So these were uh, these are versions of Bitcoin where something was changed and they went off and decided to play in their own corner. Anyone who held BSV or Bcash got completely slaughtered in Bitcoin terms simply because BTC has massively, massively outperformed these other games of donkey basketball. Uh, Bitcoin itself has a market cap right now of something like $800, $900 billion. Bcash, Bitcoin Cash, fake Bitcoin, donkey basketball Bitcoin has a market cap of uh, $8 billion. BSV, which is a fork of uh, Bitcoin Cash, so in other words, they changed the rules again, has a market cap of only $2 billion. So these are profitable coins if you're the scammer who forked them and then tried to get, got peop- tried to, tried to get people to uh, buy them from you. But these are basically forms of donkey basketball, and they're no threat to, uh, they're no threat to Bitcoin whatsoever. And so if you're running B, if you're running Bcash software, or BSV, uh, BSV uh, software, or if you're running any version of Bitcoin that has something different. So if, if it has a different minor block sub- subsidy, maybe the miners are being paid more or less than 6.25 Bitcoin. If it has larger block sizes like Bcash and BSV do, if it's running on proof of stake in the way that, uh, the uh, Ripple uh, folks, Chris Larson, wants Bitcoin to transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, if it's, so, if it's running a different um, consensus algorithm or anything else that's different, basically the nodes that are on the Bitcoin network running Bitcoin Core will just refuse to communicate with you. So you could set up 200,000 nodes running a modified version of Bitcoin. It would not matter because the Bitcoin network is not a democracy. All those uh, those other nodes would not talk to you, the regular Bitcoin core nodes. And this is what makes a network. This is what makes a network. You have nodes uh, agreeing to do the same thing in the same way that a basketball game is players and an audience and uh, referees that have agreed on certain rules. And so if you are, are running a modified version of Bitcoin, you're basically playing donkey basketball. That's fine, but you're not really part of the Bitcoin revolution. You're not where the action is at. You're not where the liquidity is, where the real brand is. You're not buying the same Bitcoin that uh, that Tesla has been buying or that Michael Saylor has been buying. or And you're also not buying, uh, you're not playing with the same form of Bitcoin that Russia has recently said that they would accept in exchange for their crude oil and their natural gas. They're not accepting Bcash. They're not accepting XRP or Cardano or Solano or anything like this. So you can go off, you can be a scammer, you can play donkey basketball, or you can just do your own niche coin, but you're not part of the Bitcoin revolution. If, you can, uh, you, if you're a really good marketer, you might be able to get really rich doing this. All you need to do is convince people to buy your crappy new token or your new coin. This is what most of the current crypto industry really is uh, involves, and this is why uh, this is why I'm a Bitcoiner and not something else. If you're going to go off and play donkey basketball, you just have to realize that you're not helping humanity free itself from central bankers, from inflation, from the risks of confiscation, from monetary imperialism as well. So the more you study this, the deeper you go, the more you will realize that BTC is the solution for humanity's problems. It's the central project. It's the project that matters. It's the social consensus that matters. And so it doesn't matter if uh, someone goes out and sets up a whole bunch of hostile nodes running different code. You can, they can set up as many hostile nodes as they want, but unless they're running the real Bitcoin software, it doesn't matter. They'll just be off in the corner playing donkey basketball. I want to end here by talking about the, the really dangerous kind of attack on Bitcoin and really the re- main reason that I do this channel. There, there's Bitcoin cannot be hacked. Uh, there's so many uh, 
there's so many ad known addresses that have a ton of Bitcoin. They're huge. Basically, you could consider, can, could consider them bug bounties. You can make tens of billions of dollars if you could figure out how to hack Bitcoin. The real attacks on Bitcoin are not, uh, they're not technological, but they're social attacks. And this is what makes them very dangerous. So we have the attack on proof of work, uh, alleging that it boils the oceans, which it certainly does not. I talk a lot about Bitcoin's energy usage in my videos on this channel. Uh, we have a tax saying, well, we should raise the max supply. 21 million coins is not enough for humanity. And then we have another version that we should we need to allow the feds or the, or the Federal Reserve or the Treasury, U.S. Treasury or J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs to verify if our Bitcoin is green or if there's something good about it. These are social attacks. These are very, very dangerous and they need to be fought. But Bitcoin is not threatened by Ethereum. It's not threatened by XRP or Cardano or Solana. It does its own thing. But we need to make sure that we keep up on the education side of things. People understand how Bitcoin works, what makes it so special, what makes the consensus rules so special, because this is the real vector of dangerous attacks, these, these kind of social attacks. And this is one of the things I try to counter uh, on this YouTube channel. So if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. If you click the like button, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. Maybe share this video with a few friends. And then if you really want to take it to the next level, check out my Bitcoin course, which I will link to in the description notes below, where I have just hours and hours covering Bitcoin in a really advanced and in-depth way, and also teaching you how to use Bitcoin yourself. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.